This has been a highly requested video, so I'm coming at you today with an at-home core workout. I have big opinions on how to properly work the core, but instead of blabbing at you for the next 10 minutes, I'll do it over top of the workout. Deal? Great. Let's jump in. We're doing this workout in real time today, so you can either follow along or save for later. We'll see 10 exercises. We'll perform them 45 seconds on and 15 seconds off. You can do this once, twice, three times, however many times you want to burn out that core, but let's jump on in. For the night. I love the dead bug for three big reasons. Number one, we're working in extension rather than flexion. I've talked about this in more videos than I can count, but essentially, our body is in flexion most of the day. We are very sedentary and seated primarily today as a society, which causes us to hunch forward and flex, which shortens the abdominals. To counteract that, I prefer to primarily work the core in extension. I also love this exercise because it really emphasizes mind-body connection connection and coordination. And finally, it's hitting a ton of different muscles. Rectus abdominis, obliques, TVA, erector spinae. These are the primary movers here. And these muscles are both stabilizing core muscles, but also those show muscles we desperately want everyone to see. Make sure you work slowly and keep your low back pinned to the floor the entire time. So any exercise where we're changing our center of gravity is a must for me. Every day we're compensating to stabilize against our changing center of gravity, so we need to train for that. As the arm reaches away from your body at different angles, you need to use a different part of your core to keep your hips stable and even. Now, a lot of people don't realize that working from a prone position can work your core just as much as supine, but planks are some of my favorite base positions because you're automatically working stabilization, they're incredibly versatile, and you'll get an amazing arm workout in as well. Added bonus. The more muscles we can work at once, the more efficient the exercise is. Make sure your shoulders are away from the ears, joints are stacked, and hips are frozen in place. If you're having trouble keeping the hips still, widen your feet apart for a little more support. Working your core standing? What? I know. My clients are typically shocked when they request to work their core and then I put them on their feet. We need to remember that your core works best for you daily as a stabilizer, so we need to mimic that movement. With this exercise, you'll primarily work your obliques and low abdominals, but also the muscles of the back as you keep your shoulders down and retracted. Just an added benefit. The other thing I love about this is the dual planes of motion we hit. The squat hits the most common plane of motion, sagittal, training front to back. It's an important movement, but we tend to only focus on this plane while training. What we tend to miss is the transverse plane or the twist. So I love this not only because we hit the twist, but because we're putting the twist with another plane. I really love it simply because that's how we move daily in all planes of motion with each other. This one is deceiving. Seriously, it's gonna burn. These leg presses help activate your TVA or transverse abdominis. It's one of the deepest muscles of the core musculature and attaches directly to the spine. It's incredibly important to train your TVA because it's important for good posture and acts as your foundation. While performing this exercise, keep your knee in line with your hip and your ankle in line with your knee. If that knee is hugging into the chest, you'll run the risk of activating the hip flexor instead. I hold each leg for about 10 seconds on a good day and keep active pressure coming from both sides. Press into the leg and press into the hands.
As long as you're proficient in planks, I love putting a lot of variety within them. It's a great moment to work coordination and hit many muscles of the arms and core. Even without any weight, the rows work the back, shoulder, bicep, and tricep. The push-up adds in the chest, and the sit-back gives a quick reprieve out of the shoulders, allowing you to stay in the working muscles and out of the upper traps. I love adding in active recoveries like sit-backs or down dogs to keep the body working, but also keep it focused on the prime mover. If you're just trying to figure out proper form, work slowly here. Otherwise, you can totally use this as a heart rate up, and I have to say, it's kind of thrilling to fly through all of these together. Another standing exercise. Here, we're working balance. And balance training is just code word for core training. This is a sneaky one for sure. The test here is to hold the lunge on either side and make sure you're stable and in control. It's also an amazing compound movement, working the muscles of the upper and lower body at the same time. Again, using the body as a unit like we do in everyday life. Take your time here and make sure your joints are stacked, knee over ankle and knee under the hip. Make sure you switch sides halfway through to get an even amount of work. The leg lower is another great example of extension over flexion. As the legs lower away from the body, your core will fire as you try to keep your low back pinned down to the floor. Just like the dead bug, I love a good leg lower because it's also a very versatile movement. You can regress it by doing single leg, advance it by adding the arms, and you can even add weights to the arms. Sometimes I'll couple the leg lower with a chest press, a bicep curl, tricep extension. It's just a great opportunity to get really creative. Every time I demonstrate these for people, they're like, oh, okay, piece of cake. Then they get in it and they're like, what is happening? The goal here is to keep everything frozen except for the arm reaching back. This will fire your obliques like crazy as you use them to keep your hips in place. Some things to watch out for though include sitting into your shoulder socket. Try to lift out of the joint and load the muscle instead. You'll also have the urge to drop the head down, so keep the focus just in front of your mat or your hands to lengthen the cervical spine and improve your posture. If this is a little too challenging, you can always drop to the knees or bring it up to the hands. The good morning is going to target a number of muscles of the upper and lower body, including the core, glutes, and low back. I love this exercise because even though it's not going to totally exhaust you by any means, it's reinforcing a movement pattern that most of us don't get nearly enough of, the hip hinge. So even if it's body weight, incorporating this into your routine is definitely something to think about. If you've got some light weights lying around, you can absolutely add those in for some added resistance, or you can add a booty band around the thighs and it will definitely light up the glutes even more. Your 
And finally, a simple favorite, the hollow hold. This is a great exercise for any level because there are some easy ways to progress or regress it. But at the end of the day, this is going to build some great strength in your core stabilizers. Make sure you're keeping the head in line with the rest of your spine and low back pinned down to the floor. So since you've made it through, you can either leave it at that or repeat up to three times to make it a standalone core workout. But make sure you cool down, subscribe, and I'll see you all soon.